Hi there, my name is Gail. Tonight we're going to do a 40 to 50 minute yoga class. It's a gentle yoga for low back care. This is great for people that have MS, Parkinson's, those uh, that have a bit of back pain. So we're going to go through some of the poses that I use to help ease my back pain and just strengthen all the muscles around that have anything to do with the back. So um, types of things that you're going to need are a yoga strap, a block, a yoga blanket, if you have a hard time getting up and off the ground, I suggest also uh, getting a chair close by because I'll show you how to get down on the floor because about three-fourths of our poses today are on the floor. Again, this is a class that's meant for beginners, but you always keep everything between easy and out. If it hurts, don't do it. Listen to the breath. Breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. So let's get started, okay? Yay! All right, so first we'll be doing constructive rest pose, which means you're going to lie on your back with your knees bent. So again, if you have a little bit of challenge getting down on the floor, you know, you can take that chair close to the edge of your yoga mat or one, one end of your yoga mat. You know, I'm trying to make sure my little ball here doesn't move around while I teach class. Uh, and then you're going to contract the belly button towards the spine, bend those knees, bend, 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 hands on the chair. Now, if it's available, maybe you can place your forearms on the chair, step one leg back. Come down to your knee. Now, if you have issues with one of your knees, you don't want to have both knees on the ground, then you can just kind of tip over to the side. And you take your time. Maybe bring a leg out, hand out, come down to the floor. All right. So, again, our first pose is constructive rest pose. That's a great one if you can stay in it about 15 minutes. Um, anytime your back is kind of aching throughout the day, I would suggest, you know, do this if you can. Take, give your back a little break. So, we're going to lay on our back. Again, I told you we need a strap and a block. And the knees are bent, so the knees are not towards one another or away. They're just kind of parallel. Look like number 11s of your to look up, or a little pair of skis here. And you can kind of walk them in a little bit and have them be nice and parallel. All right, so to start with the breathing, it's called the diaphragmatic breath. And so you're going to breathe with the belly. And you'll place one hand right below where that little, uh, the joining of the ribs happens. And then the hand below that, and make sure your shoulders are nice and comfortable. Again, these are poses I use to help ease my own personal back pain. So here we go. As we breathe in, it's kind of weird. You're going to breathe in through the nose and then let your belly expand like a balloon inflating. So here we go. So breathe in, belly gets big. And as you exhale, the belly contracts towards the spine. Get all that air out of the lungs. And again, inhale, belly big. Very good. Exhale, belly towards the spine. Now the, the upper ribs move some, and the, the ribs up here at the top of the chest move also. That's your three-part breath. The belly, the midsection, and then the top section. So let's try to really visualize all that expanding as we breathe in. So here we go. Let's do that again. Breathing in. All the way up to the top of the collarbone. Exhale, all the air out. So there's a little contraction of the belly button towards the spine. And again, breathe in, belly soft. And exhale. All right, so we're going to start with windshield wipers after we just, you know, have been in constructive rest pose for a moment. So the leg that's closest to me, we're going to contract the belly button towards the spine, drop the leg towards, the, towards me. You're kind of on the side of the foot here. So you're moving the hips independently in this particular version of this pose. And then the other leg, drop it towards me. So you should feel that elongation, lengthening, kind of stretch, contraction happening here on the top side of the body. Contract the belly button towards the spine. Bring the leg back on up. Bring the other leg back on up. And breathe in, belly soft. And then contract the belly button towards the spine. Let's do the other leg. The leg furthest away from me, just kind of open it up. And then do the other. And again, kind of notice, how does this side feel versus the other side? Does it feel more tight? Does it feel the same? Does it feel a little bit more open? Things to kind of consider. Breathe in. Exhale. Contract the belly button towards the spine. Bring one leg in, then the other. Beautiful. Now, another version of this pose is kind of bringing those ankles together, the insides of the legs together, so this, you know, the inside of the knees are touching. And you do both legs at the same time. And again, breathe in, belly soft to begin with. Contract that belly button towards the spine as you exhale. And I'm going to bring my arms up to the side and lower the legs towards me. 
And again, breathe in, belly soft. Exhale, back to heart center. Contract that core right there. Beautiful. And again, breathe in, belly soft. Rises up. Exhale, let's take it the other direction. Again, kind of notice how this feels, one side versus the other. And again, breathe in, stay here. Exhale, contract that belly, bring the legs back to heart center. Beautiful. All right. So that was our windshield wipe to just kind of warm up the musculature in our hips. So you got to warm it up before you work it out and get it strengthened, right? All right. So now we're going to do a little bit of pelvic tilt. So I'm going to bring my feet back out toward their parallel again. And I'm going to take my tailbone and tilt it towards my low ribs. So I'm pushing the small of the back into the yoga mat. So if you have SI joint dysfunction, this usually it's very, uh, feels very nice because you're getting everything nice and stabilized into the floor. And then you tilt the pelvis away. So if you were to place your hands underneath, there would be a little space. Or well, maybe there's a little space there. <laughs> I'd have a little bit more space if I was a little bit tinier, but, you know, that's okay. I work with what I got, right? And then tilt your tailbone towards your ribs. I'm contracting. I'm exhaling as I tilt towards me. And then inhale, belly soft. Kind of make it go away. Tilt away. And I'm just expanding that belly. And exhale, draw that belly button towards the spine. Bring the pelvic bones towards your low ribs. Inhale, belly soft. Tilt it away. Now your movement may be a lot smaller than my movement. It may be a lot larger than my movement. So I'm just tilting back and forth. So again, warming up that musculature on the back side of the body. Notice if you're getting close to an ouch area. Again, do a little bit less range of motion and continue to breathe in and out. And always, again, keep it between easy and ouch. All right, so the next one, we're going to come back to whatever feels comfortable for you at this moment. We're going to do knees to chest. So this one's, you know, kind of got several purposes. It helps with digestion, elimination, because it stimulates the colon. So that's good. Also, it warms up the joints and the hips and the knees. And you kind of get a nice um, strengthening move going on here, too. So we're going to contract the belly button towards the spine, lift a leg off, the one that's closest to me, and then exhale, bring that knee into the chest. And as you inhale, belly soft, push that leg away. Ooh, little snap, crackle, pops going on there. Exhale, knee into chest. Inhale, leg away. Now, some folks, you know, they have a hard time bringing that knee into chest. So what you can do is take that strap along the bottom of the foot and have it be there like a little pace marker. Breathing in. Exhale, knee into chest. It just helps guide the leg to do this. And it also allows you to really know to flex that heel toes towards you. Exhale, knee into chest. Now, you don't have to use a lot of arm strength here. This strap is just kind of like a placement marker. Inhale, leg away. One more, knee into chest. And release. You know what? I'm going to take the strap out to the side. I won't use it on the other side. we got to do the other side, though, right? So breathe in first. Exhale, contract that belly button. Lift the leg and bring that knee into the chest. Get all that air out. Notice that this one comes closer to the chest versus the others. So for me, it does. Because the side that's closest to you is my very tight side today. All right, and inhale, leg away. So for me, this one's easier to do. Exhale, knee into chest. So I might actually go faster because I don't have any challenges going on today. Breathe in, at least on this side. <laughs> and then exhale, knee into chest. But you know what? I'm just going to keep moving with the breath. Breathe with the movement. So I'm not going to go faster than I normally would. And then exhale, knee in the chest. So I'm breathing through the mouth so you can hear the breath. Normally we keep the lips softly sealed as we breathe in, as we breathe out. So, you know, one of the things you can do is have a person or a thing in your mind that you're thankful for. Just have a little idea of gratitude. So, um... Just something, you know, it's like an intention, but, you know, just be thankful. Maybe for the food you eat, the place where you lay your head down at night, maybe the people in your life, maybe your yoga practice, you know, whatever floats your boat, right? Just be thankful for something. Just, you know, grab onto an idea, being thankful. All right, we're going to do one more. Bring it in and give a nice little hug and release. 
we're going to do the notice pose. The notice pose is what I ask you to do is to bring the legs out towards the edge of your yoga mat and you just kind of notice how does your body feel. Does it feel kind of drawn up or tight or tighter one side versus the other? Anyway, so we go through the poses and then I'll ask you to go into this pose to again kind of notice, hmm, does it feel any different? All right, so we're going to contract the belly button towards the spine, bend one knee, then the other, and maybe walk the feet a little bit more closer, and then grab that strap. If you don't have a strap, you can do hands back behind the thigh instead. So that's, or grab a long hand towel, kind of wrap it on its ends, and use it instead of a strap. You can also use a dog or a cat leash. That works too, or a belt from a robe, or a man's tie, or a woman's tie. All right, so we're going to contract the belly button towards the spine. The leg that's closest to me, you're going to place into the, like the middle of the strap and then push the strap towards the sky. Now this side for me is like super, super tight. <laughs> when my voice goes up, that means it's getting tight. Um, so for me, I have to have a little bend in the knee, and this is called the big toe hold. Traditional yoga has you doing your peace fingers. I'm going to demonstrate this just shortly. And then wrap it around your big toe and thumb on top of the toe. Now my knee's out to the side, but what we try to do is just like what I showed in just a moment, leg straight. Now I can't quite do that without my shoulder and my neck and my, you know, everything I'll kind of miss out of line. So that's what I like about the strap. I can have everything nice and on the yoga mat. I don't have to strain my shoulders or anything like that. And then I can, that way I can reach <laughs> my feet with that strap. I'm just, I'm just not flexible on this side and that's okay. You might find that true for you too, especially if you're encountering uh, challenges with back, right? All right, so what I try to do when I'm in big toe hold is I look to see if my foot has traveled out to the side. So it tends to travel to, to the out to the side and then my heel towards the center, kind of like little little penguin feet, I think. And then, But I want to invite you to have the toes be in, in line with the top of the ankle, the shin, and the knee. You might get a little bit more spice in the hip when that happens. And maybe you can invite it a little bit more. Woo, maybe not. <laughs> and again, if it's, you know, getting to a big challenge, holding the pose, return your attention to the breaths. So let's breathe in and out. Again, inhaling and exhaling. So this is one of the poses we use for building bone when we do the yoga for osteopenia, osteoporosis prevention. So, you know, you're doing a little bit, a little bit of strength here, a little bit of force. So you're, uh, contracting the muscles in the quadricep, the hamstring, the calf, the feet. And when you contract muscles, that also stimulates bone. So this is a bone building exercise. This is also great for runners. You don't normally see runners plopping themselves down on their backs doing this pose. You usually see the standing version of this. All right, so we're gonna make this a little bit different. We're gonna get into all the nooks and crannies and the hips. So I'm gonna take my other foot, kind of walk it out a little bit and open up that leg, kind of like I did in windshield wipes. And then I'm going to invite this leg a little bit towards me, a little spice, and drop it out to the side. Now, when that opposite hip starts to roll up, you know you've gone too far. So you don't, you know, you don't want to go plunk down to the ground, and then that hip is way up in the air. So you know, maybe I'll place my hand on that other leg just to give it a little bit of counterbalance here. And then, you know, I'm using my hand grip to hold the strap, toes towards me. Now, what's the nice thing about this strap? It's called a stretch out strap. It has loops, and I can just loop my hands in the strap, so I don't really have to hold it with a grippy string, but I, I can use it in the in the web of my hand instead. So, um, but you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm just going to keep it, with, and that just is really nice. And I'm going to bring it back to the heart center, bend that knee into the chest, and release the strap. Release the strap. <laughs> Let's take the legs out towards the edge of the yoga mat again. We're going to do that notice pose. Just notice, okay, this side that we just worked with, does it feel different than the other side? So there might be a real subtle difference. There may be a big difference. And again, contract the belly button towards the spine, bend one knee, then the other, and switch that strap over onto the other side. So here we go. Press that strap towards the sky, invite the leg towards your chest, line up the toes with the ankle, shin, knee. So for this one, I can do a pretty straight leg for me and it's more uh, more in towards my face. So, you know, I've got a, a, a curve going on with my spine, so I have very highly, high, highly held tight muscles where my curve is going towards or away. I, I, I can't remember right at this moment, but 
nevertheless. Whew, this one's a lot easier to do. And again, breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. And again, toes towards your heart center, heel flex the way. Now, if you're feeling stuff in the back of the knee, you can always bend that knee just a bit. But keep flexing the heel, toes towards you. Beautiful. All right. So I'm going to take this leg that's closest to you now, walk it out a little bit, and drop it open like we did in windshield wipes. Maybe hand on the leg, but I'm going to see if I need it this time. And then drop the leg out to the side. Now, I've got the wall here, so I can't quite go down towards the floor. You know what? I'm going to turn a little bit, see if that makes it. Yeah, I can go a little bit wider there. So there you go. And then I'll try to invite it towards my body a little bit too. So again, getting into all the musculature here in that hip socket at a different angle. So that's, you know, good stuff. So it helps you have better joint mobility. So that's good. That's good. Again, you can always bend that knee. And when you bend the knee, you're going to feel it in little different areas. So um, you have to kind of decide which one feels better. Yeah. And again, breathe in and out through the nose. I'm going to go back onto the yoga mat. And then bring that leg back into the chest. There we go. Beautiful. All right. And again, let's do the notice pose. Let's see. Extend one leg, then the other. And sometimes the hip grabs you when you extend. You kind of have to pat your hips. Let your legs splay open. I'm already opening, opening up just a little bit right here. Okay. So next yoga pose is called rolling bridge. Again, some of the poses that we use for um, strengthening, uh, warming up the muscles. This is for the back and the buttocks. And let me scooch down a little bit. Uh, it feels weird, huh? <laughs> Again, my legs are parallel. I'm going to kind of walk the feet a little bit towards me a little bit. Very good. And then it's kind of like uh, what we did before with the pelvic tilts. I'm going to breathe in. The belly gets big. And as I exhale, I'm going to tilt my pelvis and then push into my upper arm, shoulders, feet, and raise up. So I can barely raise up on this particular bridge because I'm pretty, I'm pretty stiff right now. And again, stay here whether you're lifted or just barely off the ground, inhaling. So my belly got big on that. I don't know if you all notice. And then exhale, roll your spine on down. And then after that exhale, relax, breathe in. Exhale, tilt that pelvis, contract that belly button towards the spine, push into the feet, push into the shoulders. So I'm able to come up on that second try. Hardly ever on the first try. I don't know what it is. And again, breathe in. And then exhale, lower. Try to think, see if you can just like lower one vertebra at a time. Sometimes that's mission impossible there. Okay. And then relax, breathe in, belly soft. Exhale, tilt that pelvis, contract the belly button, push into those feet, push into the shoulder, look at the ceiling. Now you might be feeling a little extra stretch going on here in the quadriceps. Yeah. Breathe in, push into that floor. Exhale, roll it down. Now, I can't usually feel the roll at the very bottom of the spine, but we're going to do something here in just a bit to where maybe we can do that. And again, breathe in, belly soft. Exhale, tilt that pelvis, push into the feet, push into the shoulders, upper arms. Now, we're going to stay here. So breathe in. Try to have the legs parallel, not going out to the side, okay? Exhale, stay here. One more. Inhale, stay here. Now this time, exhale, lower about halfway. Now you may be shaking. Breathe in, stay here. And then slowly, slowly, slowly as you exhale, lower onto the ground. Woo, beautiful. All right, now as we inhale, extend one leg. Ooh, already noticing opening up there. Oh my goodness. And then that other side. Again, does it feel a little bit more open to you? You know, I'd like some feedback. Uh, whenever we do the notice pose, notice when it makes a, a difference to you. So rolling bridge is like, wow, okay, it's just adding to the equation to help me with my back pain. Also, contract the belly button towards the spine. Very good. Then the other, we're going to do a pigeon pose. But you know what? we got to warm up the muscles before we strengthen them, all right? So the first thing, I'm going to show this um, top down. So um, basically, I'm going to take that right leg up, and I'm going to take my hand on top of the thigh and back behind, kind of turn it out to the side. So again, I'm kind of manipulating in that joint, in that hip joint. And then I'm going to have the heel go to the center, the toes out, and drop it on top of the left leg. And then I'm just going to bounce my right leg away. Let me see if you all can see that. Yep, you can. Okay, 
Y'all see me bouncing that leg? All right, so that's warming up the piriformis. So the piriformis is one of those muscles that can be surrounding that sciatica nerve. And if that sciatica nerve gets pinched, it gets cranky. And then you might have a pain in your foot or your calf or your leg or your buttock or low back. And the sciatica nerve could also not even be around the piriformis. It might be like pinched in the pelvic notch. So again, we got to warm it up before we work it out. Woo! All right, so now that's probably enough bouncing. What I'm going to do is contract my belly button towards the spine. I'm going to lift up, lift that left leg and in towards my chest. Now, I'm not going to have the toes point away. I'm going to have the toes towards my knees. That bottom leg, the left leg, I'm just going to let it dangle near my behind. Well, it doesn't get too close. And you can be here with the hands back behind the thighs or on the interlace on the, sh on the shin. Um, some folks, though, you know, they've got short torso or long torso and sh short arms, and they'll use that strap instead in order to invite the leg towards you. So, you know, use your props when you need to, right? All right. So um, from here, what we're going to do, I'm just going to have my hands be underneath my left leg, and I'm going to take my right hand and push on the top uh, right knee. So I'm kind of like pulling and pushing. Again, keep it between easy and ouch. Breathe in, breathe out. And then I'm going to release from that. I'm going to pretend that there's a pencil on the end of my right knee, and I'm going to draw a shape. So I'm going to take my entire lower body and draw that shape. So for me, since I have a curve in my spine, I kind of feel those little bones going <laughs> when I do this side. I was talking to one of my other students, and she has the opposite curve that I have. And so when she does the other leg, she'll feel the, the spine kind of moving through its little paces. I make it go the other way. So it might feel different the other way. And if this is like really a big challenge for you, just being in the pose, maybe all you need to do. Again, keep everything between easy and ouch. And just know that, you know, whatever movement or non-movement you can do, that's where you got, have to start from, right? And release. All right. So we got to do the other side, yeah? So I'm going to show this, you know, just the regular way with the other side. So um, I'm going to bring the other leg up and hand on thigh, hand back behind me, and just turn it out to the side. Again, I'm kind of manipulating the hip in that joint, warming up, warming up. And then I'm going to take my heel towards the center, toes out towards you, drop it on top of that right leg. And then I'm going to bounce my left leg. There we go. Woo! Now maybe you bring it towards you and let it drop. I don't know. I'm going to bounce this one away. So when I'm sitting on a chair doing this one, I usually have to lift it up as opposed to push it away. And again, you know, it's not a violent movement. It's just kind of a little playful push away. Yeah. And again, if it's like if you need to do a little bit less force, that's okay too. Again, listen to your body. Yeah. Okay. That's enough of that. I'm going to contract my belly button towards my spine. I'm going to lift up, grab my bottom leg, and then again, my uh, both feet. Heels, heels, flex, toes towards my knee. Now, I'm going to have that hand underneath my thigh and the other hand on top of the knee. You may have to have both hands back behind the thigh. That's okay. So I'm going to push that away and pull it towards me. So I got a little, little traction kind of going on here. Woo! Pigeon usually is one of people's favorite ones. I like to do the one where you lay on your back because um, that way, you know, you're not having to have gravity work in a different way. There's pigeons where you are having your hips towards the floor, and that's a little bit more advanced, but this one's great for beginners. All right, again, like there's a felt tip pin on top of my knee, and I'm going to draw a shape. Woo! <laughs> really feel that in my uh, left hip area. Okay, so this is the side where I feel the little spine going. And then pause, go the other way. Notice if your shape makes a different shape when you go the other direction or if you feel some little stuck spots in your shape. So my shape usually becomes an oval and not a circle on this side. And then bring it back to the heart center and then, you know, drop it, drop the foot down, drop the other foot down. Guess what? Do the notice pose. Notice, wow, how this feels now. Might feel pretty open. Yeah? Okay, contract the belly button towards the spine, one foot, and then the other. So we're going to do what they call reclined butterfly, reclined um, 
cobbler's pose. It's also known as, known as the yoga band-aid. So this is one that you would do if you like to lie on your back for sleep at night, but it feels very uncomfortable. This one just seems to just open up and allow you to do that. I would suggest, though, putting something underneath the back of the knee um, when you sleep at night, just, you know, so you can have that happen. So I'm moving, moving away from the wall because uh, reclined butterfly means bottoms of the feet together and the knees out. So, again, we're going to be doing that pelvic tilt. If you're feeling like SI joint dysfunction pain, you may want to tilt the whole time. Okay? So, and the way you know if you have that is that when you roll over in bed at night, you get that ooh, kind of pain in your pelvis. And that might mean some of your bones are just kind of misaligned or out of alignment. So, there's, there's some yoga poses to help with that. So, here we go. What we're going to do is breathe in, belly soft. Exhale, tilt that pelvis and come about halfway as you exhale. So you're making your wings come up to halfway. Inhale, stay here. Exhale together, bottoms of the feet on the yoga mat. Now I'm just demonstrating with the hands. You don't have to do the hands like I'm doing. And then inhale, open up. Here we go. Open up and open up. Bottoms of the feet together. Belly soft. Exhale. Tilt that pelvis. Come up about, about a third. So this is all about slow. This is not a rush through it kind of thing. Inhale. Stay here. Woo! Exhale to about two thirds, which sometimes looks like my one half, by the way. Inhaling. Stay here. Exhale. Legs back together. Bottoms of the feet on the yoga mat. Open up. Inhale. Belly soft. Exhale. Tilt that pelvis. Come up barely up off the ground. Now you may be shaking here. Breathe in. Exhale to about halfway. Oh yeah, it's shaking. Breathe in. Exhale to about uh, three-fourths. I almost said two-thirds. <laughs> Breathe in, stay here. Exhale all the way back together. Whew, bottoms of the feet on the yoga mat. Now, let's go ahead and extend those legs. Take it nice and slow as you extend. Ooh, notice what's going on. Does it feel any different? Is it kind of yummy? Oh, that's how I feel. Ooh, I, yeah. It feels like my hips are open. And there's like hardly any tension going on with my backside. I can see putting a little thing underneath my knees. When I'm sleeping at night. So there you go. There's some of our yoga poses that we're going to do. Now we're going to, let me see here, we're going to bend one knee, contract that belly button towards the spine, then the other. Now drop the knees towards me. I'm going to lift my behind up and scoot so I can stay on my yoga mat. Well, of course I didn't stay on my yoga mat. And the hands in front of you, contract that belly button towards the spine, push your body up, come up on that elbow. Whew. Walk it up a little bit more. So just know when you come up off the floor, even from, from from where we were to here, sometimes you can get a little dizzy. So what I like to do, just as a little break, is place my hands on my belly, drop my chin towards my chest, look at the floor, and breathe in through that nose. Exhale, belly button towards the spine. Let's do that two more times. Here we go. Breathe in, belly out. Exhale, belly towards the spine. One more time. Inhale, belly out. Exhale, belly towards the spine. Okay. I'm looking at the yoga poses that we're going to be trying to do tonight. This is a short practice. It's not, you know, an hour, 90-minute practice. I'll be doing a little bit more yoga poses. But I want to make this short and sweet for those of you that, you know, haven't done a regular practice and just kind of want to get into the groove. But we're just kind of going over some basic stuff to give you a little bit of relief. And, you know, we'll add on to like an hour class and a 90-minute class. But for right now, we're just going to kind of stick with what we got right here. So basically, I'm transitioning onto my hands and knees. I'm going to do what they call cat-cow. You probably already know this. We're going to do a little variation of this so we can get all lots of movement in our spine. Traditionally, hands are underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. The elbows turn towards, the elbow pits turn towards one another. But what we're going to do is walk those hands forward a little bit. And then lay the forearms down, spread out those hands like little starfish, hands and arms, not shoulder width apart, my behind sticking away up in the air, right? Okay. 
and then I'm going to sink my behind towards my heels. Now, if you don't like being on the knees like this, you can sit in the chair and do cat-cow also. That's another video, though, so if you want to sit in the chair just for a moment, if your knees are giving you some issues, please do so. So to begin with, contract that belly button towards the spine. My, my belly gets in the way. <laughs> and let's inhale, shift forward, and then start peeling those forearms off the young man. Little upper body arm strength going on there. And as you exhale, curve up to the top of the room and start sinking your behind towards your heels. Now you can be curly toes or tops of the feet. And again, forearms come down. Then you inhale, drag that nose forward and then start peeling up and off. Curving, exhale, drop the hips wherever you can go here. And inhale, drag yourself forward. Exhale, curve. Inhaling, drag. And then come back to a neutral spine. This is where we do have hands underneath the shoulders, the knees underneath the hips. Let me see, I'm going to back up here a little bit. I'm trying to see where I'm at here. All right, so we're going to do spinal balance. We're going to take one leg to the edge of our yoga mat. In fact, you know, i got to walk back a little bit. Here we go. Okay, and I'm contracting my belly button towards the spine. So I get to push my heel to the back room. You kind of see that? Yeah. Got that nice calf contraction booty business going on. And I'm going to, again, shift my hands underneath my shoulders. That opposite hand, I'm going to um, bring it out, but first I'm going to contract my belly button towards the spine, arm extends, and then leg lifts. Pointing my toes down, heel flex, breathe in, exhale, inhale, bring it back to the center. Woo! All right, let's do the other side. So I'm going to bring that leg out, push the heels back to the room, contract my belly button towards the spine, and then exhale, arm and leg out, inhale, bring it in. Exhale, the other arm and leg out, contract that belly, inhale, bring it in. Exhale, contract that belly. Inhale, bring it in. All right, we're going to move to standing. So again, um, if you know how to stand in regular yoga, you please do so. But if you want to use your chair to come up off the ground, I, you know, drag it towards you. And then um, bring one foot in front of the, the seat of the chair. Contract your belly button towards the spine, lean a little forward, lift that knee, and then walk your foot up towards the chair, hands on the hips, and head on up. All right, so let me move that chair out of the way. We're going to do a warrior pose and a balance pose, and then we're going to do one more thing on the ground and go into our guided relaxation and meditation. So let's step those feet by. Yeah, okay, beautiful. We're going to turn a set of toes towards the candles. So I'm going to lift that heel and just kind of move that toe, set of toes towards the candles. Sometimes my hips turn, so I have to think about, okay, parallel hips as best I can kind of matching the, the long end of my yoga mat. So I'm going to heel toe out a little bit because i got the super long legs, yeah. Now let's bend the knee towards that short end of the yoga mat. she got one knee going one direction and then one knee going towards the front of the room. All right. So you can see a toe peeking out from that bent knee. Kind of wiggle those shoulders a little bit. Let's bring those arms out into a letter T. Maybe, you know, readjust the feet a little bit. Beautiful. Then if it's available, you're going to turn your chin over the bent knee side. So your warrior two pose. So imagine there's a wrinkle in your yoga mat. And you're going, oh, I don't like wrinkles in my yoga mat. So you're pulling the legs opposite directions to get lots of dynamic tension happening in the legs. Beautiful, beautiful. Staying here and breathing just a little bit, pressing down into the floor. Oh, yeah, there you go. Now it's not floppy arms. It's like strong arms out to the opposite ends of your yoga mat. Bring your hands back to heart center. Softly straighten, pivot that foot, and then walk it in. Again, today is this little bit 45-minute practice, so we'll just see what we get done in that time frame. Step those feet out. Again, warrior two, lift the heel. We're going to do the other side towards the plant. Bend that knee, or towards the chair. I guess you can't see the plant. <laughs> the chair's in the way. Oh, well. Check to see if your foot, your knee and your foot are aligned. Very good. And your hips parallel to that long end of the yoga mat. Arms slice the sky. Adjust your feet. Again, turn your head. And again, push firmly into the floor again. You're like you're pulling your legs opposite directions. Try not to wear your shoulders up towards your ears. Your shoulders are relaxed, but arms extended. Seems kind of like an oxymoron, doesn't it? <laughs> and again, turning the head to look over that bent knee side. 
and place your head wherever it's comfortable. So again, whoo, breathing in, breathing out, staying in the pose. We're bone building right here. Good stuff. So yoga can help you lower your blood pressure when you coordinate your movement with your breath. It can help you have better joint mobility, build bones, improve circulation, ease your back pain, help you gain flexibility, lessen your stress, and help you sleep better. Yay. Love that last part. All right, bring the hands back to heart center, unbend the knee a little bit, pivot the foot, and walk it in. All right, so we're going to try to do tree. You know what? I'm going to grab the chair because I'm pretty wiggly today. I, just, I already know I'm wiggly. <laughs> so uh, you don't have to use the chair, but we're going to come to, you know, somewhere on our yoga mat and step a foot out. Everybody teaches us so different how to get in a tree. And then I'm going to shift my weight towards the chair because I'm going to turn the outside leg out. Again, it's one of those things. One knee, one direction, one knee, the other direction. Yeah. And I'm trying to be nice and lengthy and tall towards the sky. Now I'm going to bend that knee. Now I've got my hand on the chair because I'm pretty wiggly today. You can either be here rooted. I try not to hunker down. Try to really lengthen and maybe a little cactus arms, letter V or up into the sky. You can't really see that with me and my camera though. Or maybe foot into cat. But make sure that knee is still out to the side. That it hasn't decided to travel to the front, right? So again, we're getting into that musculature of that hip joint. Beautiful. Yeah, I got my tippy fingers on the chair because I'm pretty wiggly in this one. So you got net. You got to notice the dance of the foot if there is a, a dance of the foot. Yeah. And that just kind of depends how your stuff is with your feet too. So some people have their arms go out in front when they're doing their tree. I try to bring them out to the side. Again, each, you know, to their own floating boat, right? And release. So we're going to do the other side. So I'm just going to, my chair is pretty lightweight. It's one of those metal chairs, so I'm just going to flip it around, right? All right, yours may not be the same, so be cautious. All right, step the foot out. Turn that foot out. Lift that knee. So one side may be totally different than the other. Just know that, okay? Breathing in. Lengthening. Beautiful. And release. There's one more pose I want us to do before we get down on the ground. It's called uh, lateral flexion. I'll go ahead and get my chair set up, though, um, just in case. So we're going to come standing on the center of our yoga mat. My yoga mat likes to travel a little bit. Sorry about that, folks. And we're going to have our feet be parallel, the outside of the feet parallel. So check that out. You know, squeeze those thighs. Maybe a little bit in the knee, but really super squeeze. And my yoga pants are uneven. <laughs> oh, well. Place one hand on a hip, and then inhale, circle, sweep an arm up, and then exhale, lean over. Press into that hip. Inhale, back on up. Exhale down. You know what? Let's come down to the floor and do that. So, again, move that chair. Bring one foot back. Move the other. Let's sit on our behind crisscross yoga sauce, as I like to call this. Or if you do lotus, please do that. Um, you can also use your little blanket. If you feel like your hips are really high up in the sky, you can kind of sit on the edge of your blanket, and that allows your pelvis to tilt a little forward and be nice and tall and lengthy. We're going to do that same side lateral reflection. A lot of poses that you do in yoga, you can also do seated on the floor or in the chair, so I kind of like that. So one hand down the floor, inhale, circle, sweep arms up. So we're going to get into those intercostal muscles here. Again, got to keep all the ribs and all the muscles in the chest flexible. As we age, they tend to be less flexible. Inhale back on up. And when that happens, then we get less breath going on. And I think that's a lot of people's problems with the, the COVID, yeah? They don't have the lung capacity that they did when they were younger. And maybe they're using their phones and their head is popping forward and they've got misalignment at the spine. They have back pain, yeah? All right, and release. Let's do the other side. So hand down on the floor. Inhale, circle, sweep an arm up. Now, if you need to bend an elbow, you can instead of an arm going towards the sky. It's so whatever feels best for you, right? Inhale, straight up towards the ceiling. Tall, lengthy spine. Exhale, lean over. Inhale, back on up. As you exhale, contract that belly button towards the spine. Here we go. Exhale, over. Inhaling up. Exhale over. 
and come back on this. Beautiful. All right, so let's come up our blanket. If you had a blanket, I didn't warn you about a blanket, did I? No, I sure didn't. And so we're going to come down again onto our yoga mats. So one of the things when you're in final relaxation, you can either have the knees bent, legs extended, or if you have your chair close by, you can place your legs on the seat of the chair. That kind of helps with the constructive rest pose. So, you know, whatever you want to do. Yeah? Okay. Once again, we're going to, um, let me see here, what are we going to do? We're going to bring the one knee into the chest, then the other, and just do a little rock from side to side, just to kind of massage that low back. Now, the more the knees are towards the chest, it's going to be in the mid back. So maybe if you did a, a big, wide body circle with those knees. My feet are together. My knees are a little bit apart. All right. Now make it go the other way. So we are preparing for final relaxation. So we're just kind of you know, noticing what the, the body is telling us here. From here, place one foot down, then the other. Grab your strap once again. We're going to see how our range of motion is. So we're going to place that strap into the leg that's closest to me, press it up to the sky, and notice, does it feel any different from the beginning of class? So for me, my leg is a little bit more straight, and I'm able to bring it a little bit more towards me. Now I'm going to walk that leg out and see about how it, oh my gosh, yeah, it opens up a whole lot from beginning of class. Contract that belly button towards the spine. Keep that leg up. Guess what? Bring the other leg next to it. Switch sides. Oh, I'm being fancy there. <laughs> and then again, my leg. So that's definitely a lot closer to my body this time. But I've got the wall here, so I know there's the wall. <laughs> but look, I'm able to bring it closer to my body. And there's, yeah, that feels wonderful. And release. All right, so let's go into our notice pose just to kind of notice how the body feels, yeah? All right, so it should feel pretty like, oh, man, I'm just ready to relax and release, yeah? So this is where you can be for your final relaxation. You can take your, your strap and cover your eyes, or if you had a little hand towel, uh, you know, cover your eyes, or, you know, just close the eyes. That works too, right? Um, some folks, their back is still giving them some, some issues, so what you can do Contract your belly button towards your spine, bend one knee, then the other, and then bring the knees together and the feet apart. That way you don't have to actively hold, and then you can tilt your pelvis. Sometimes that really is like, you know, a nice place to be. And so I invite you to close your eyes. I'm going to come up to the front of the camera, and I'm going to read uh, our meditation to you. So, again... Um, just kind of get a little bit comfortable. Very good. Let's see here. So wherever you are, let's get comfortable. Just notice where your, your legs are, your feet, the back of the feet, the buttocks, the back, your shoulders, the back of the head. Notice if your chin's kind of tilted up at the days, you can take the hand on the back of the head and kind of lift it up and lengthen it away. Yeah. And maybe move those shoulders a little bit and arms out to the side or maybe hands on the belly, noticing the rise and fall of the, the chest as you breathe in and out. So let's begin to notice your legs. Notice parts of the body connected to the earth. Notice your arms, hands, and fingers. Notice your shoulders and then notice the head, the top of the head. And let's bring awareness to your face, relaxing the muscles of the face, maybe opening the mouth slightly to release any tension from your jaw. Beautiful. And then we're going to start bringing attention to the breath. Just notice that you are breathing and we'll start to manipulate the breath a little. So we're going to do that by allowing the inhale to get a little bit longer. So let's do that. Breathe in. And then slowly exhale. Notice the pause at the bottom and the top of the breath. And again, breathe in, make it longer. And exhale. And our exhale gets a little bit longer too. Again, breathe in, breathe out. 
you might notice your heart beating while we're breathing. And you're allowing your breath to slow down, which allows your heart rate to slow down. Let's now move with the opposites. Let's allow your body to feel very heavy, as if you were sinking down into the earth. The earth is holding you up. And your arms and legs are heavy, your buttocks, your backside, the back of the head is heavy. And then let's allow our body to feel very light, as light as if you could float up from your um, yoga mat, floating up towards the sky. Light arms, light legs, light body. And then let's become aware of our thoughts. Take a moment just to observe any thoughts that might be coming into the mind. It's like maybe observing those shapes and figures or whatever things that are going on at the back of the eyelids, you know, back at your mind screen, your big theater mind screen. Just notice the thoughts that are running across. Try not to engage them. Just notice, just watch. Continuing to breathe, not slow. Watching whatever comes. And then for a moment, Let's check in with our emotions. Notice if there are any emotions present for you right now. And you could actually be emotionally neutral. So we're going to work with, um, let me see here, separate and connected. Okay. Imagine a time when you felt unconnected to those around you. Lonely and separate. You have the sense of being isolated and unable to find meaningful connections. Does this feeling have one or more multiple locations in your body? So sometimes you can feel a constriction in the heart, a constriction in the stomach, a constriction in the chest. Remember this feeling of being separate. Now, embody the opposite sensations. You feel the interconnectedness between yourself and everything you see. Other people nature, and the divine. You feel at one with the universe and one within yourself. Imagine positive outcomes with this connectedness. Maybe it'll help your stressful situations and just kind of bathe in this being connected. Notice your breathing. And then let's take a moment to recall a very happy time in your life. One of your happiest memories. Recall as many details as possible. Notice who's around you, what's around you, the colors, the shapes, the textures. Notice the sounds, the smells. There might even be a taste. Notice how you feel in this moment, this moment in time, your favorite happy memory. And then let's all together take a nice deep breath. Slowly exhale. Let's start to wiggle those fingers, wiggle the toes, move those wrists, those ankles. Let's bend one knee, then the other, and then slowly drop one leg over to the side, then the other. Rest there just for a moment in the side lying place. I'm going to ring the bell three times and then sing the bowl. in front of you. Push yourselves up to a seated place. Again, when we come up off the floor, we sometimes can feel a little dizzy. So place those hands to heart center. Drop the head towards your chest. Breathe in. Breathe out. Again, inhaling and exhaling. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. This was your little, little quick go through of some of the yoga poses that I use for helping to ease back pain. I was waiting all day to do this so because my back was feeling a little achy and I couldn't record until you know later on in the evening. So I was like, man, let me get up here and <laughs> get up here and do these poses. And I already, I already feel better. I hope you feel better too. Let me know down in the comments. Uh, I appreciate it. Again, 
We're going to end the class and with our little ending that we normally say when you do yoga with Gail. So you can place your hands, one hand on top of the heart, then the other. Remember at the kind of at the very beginning of the class, we talked about having a little attitude of gratitude, being grateful for something. So let's bring that also into our awareness at this moment. So the light in me honors and respects the light in you. So let's take the peace, the strength, and the understanding and pass it on and have that little attitude of gratitude. All right. So then we say the light in me honors the light in you. And the word is namaste or peace be with you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yay. Any questions, complaints, comments, compliments? I want to know uh, what else do you want to see in a general yoga class for you? And I will see you next time. Okay. All right. So bye.